Expanding fear. When writing this script, there were a lot of things that called out to me to be inspired from, and as always, one of these things was Gravity Falls. There's a particular Gravity Falls episode where there's these half human, half spider creatures, and this is sort of what I wanted to go for when creating this. I feel like for a lot of people, there's the fear of spiders, especially when you're in a place that you're not familiar with, and for this film, it was the hotel. But originally, a lot of these aspects weren't in this film. I started out by making a concept art for the creature, and it was supposed to be this green, slimy kind of figure, not really resembling a spider that much. And it wasn't until I actually introduced the hotel aspect that I knew it was going to be a spider. Thinking of the name Cobweb Hill Hotel made me think that it had to be spiders, and uh, that's really where everything started to form. On top of these changes, there were a lot of other ones with the structure of the film, where initially it was very short and started off with a guy just on his computer in his room, then hearing the sound of a vent in his room or apartment, but this just felt very dull and it would feel very short, probably only about three to four minutes, and I knew for something this cool we wanted it to be bigger and larger. We'll do like a clap for you and you're going to turn over there and that's where you're going to see one of the claws come up in. So. What hides inside? Creating this spider creature was super fun and I'm going to actually let Natalie and Anna talk about it a bit more since they're the ones that really worked on it. This is Natalie Wolcott, the makeup artist for Buried Hatchet Productions. For vents, I knew I wanted to make something more like a spider creature. So I really referenced not only fan art from various video games, but also looking at spiders in and of themselves. I start forming where the little pinchers would come in. I wanted to kind of take away the human aspect of having a mouth. I knew I wanted a ski mask base so that the actor could be comfortable moving it on and off. From then I laid a base of gelatin to take away the fabric texture and then on top of that I just painted it using various um, paint mediums, sealing it in with some blue marble sealer. I then decided to go in and finish the rest that I didn't do with alcohol paints with regular acrylic paint. The same went for the um, eye sockets where I decided to install actual uh, metal tea bag steepers to kind of take away any look through to see an actual eyeball of the talent. I wanted to take that, way, oh, take that away completely and just leave like a mesh there so that they could still see, but it also took away again the human aspect of our actor. Hi, my name is Anna Regal, and I have the honor to be a part of the BHP team. Um, I worked in costuming, and for the vents, I had a very difficult job of figuring out how exactly we were going to create a spider creature. Essentially, what I ended up doing was taking wire from Home Depot, and I created a metal skeleton that wrapped around each individual arm or claw, whatever you want to call it. The ones that actually fit on top of George, who was the actor who played our spider creature's arms, I created movable joints and circles that encircled his wrist, elbow, and shoulder so that he could move and bend the claw while it was encased in his arm. The other ones I did similarly with just slightly more structured fabric so they didn't wobble around so much. Once I had the full infrastructure done, I make, took this stretchy fabric that was uh, like a black mesh almost material and I sewed up sleeves for each of them, hand sewed them on there. And then the most tedious process was taking and distressing hundreds of strips of little black fabric and individually hand sewing each of the little pieces on so that it had that broken, decaying look. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think if I did it again, there's a lot I'd do different, but there's a lot that I learned. Creating the vent itself was pretty simple since we reused some other resources from a different project, which was the last stop. We made these doors that matched the look that I wanted for the vents anyways, so we disassembled these and structured them in the typical structure that a vent would be. Having George, who played the spider, be able to fit in the vent was super important since he's supposed to be running through it, and I was a bit nervous that it wouldn't fit, but it turned out to be the perfect fit for him, and we actually had a lot of space offset that he'd be able to run through and just prepare for that scene. <laughs> Alright, we may need to have you back up even more. Thank you. Hey guys, it's BHP's gaffer and uh, stunt guy coordinator extraordinaire here, Preston. Uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about everything that happened uh, on the set of the vents. 
whenever stunts are involved, I'm always down for it, super excited. I love to do them. Uh, so when Vin had tasked me with doing some wire work stunts, I was so down for it. The setup for these stunts are really simple. We just had two pulleys located on two different points uh, on the ceiling. One where the actor is going to be standing, the other where a few of us are going to be pulling the actors up. Uh, thankfully, we had a few people on set to help out. There were a few different shots that we needed to capture. For the first shot, we had George, the spider, suspended into the air, and we actually just dropped him onto a little homemade crash pad that we made out of some cushions. Uh, so he landed pretty softly on those uh, for the first shot. Then after that, we kind of cut that together with uh, George just acting out him falling, boom, onto the floor. Uh, and, and doing the rest of the scene there. So that actually cuts together really nicely. The second shot that we ended up using was pulling Jamie up and out of frame when he was uh, finally abducted by the spider. Uh, we had to use everybody on set in order to pull him up quick enough and it turned out really nice. There was actually another shot that we attempted to get using the wires but it just did not work out with the equipment that we currently have. There was the scene of the spider on the wall and so when we had filmed that, it was actually just the wall put it onto the floor and you know acted as if he was on it. What we had tried to do was have him on the wire and act, you know, just do a little Spider-Man on the wall. Did not quite work how we wanted to. Uh, in the future, I definitely want to try to tackle that challenge again uh, and it'll turn out better for sure that time. But uh, for now, uh, what we did worked out really well and I was super glad with how everything turned out with the wires. Right for the role. Picking actors for this was somewhat challenging since we needed someone who was very physical to be able to play the spider and someone that would be comfortable with the wire stunts that we were performing. George is really great on set because if you throw a challenging task at him, he'll do what he can to try his best and make sure he gets it so the film could be better and that's exactly what he did for this. He suited up in this costume which was definitely not comfortable and stood in a harness with wires on him for over an hour and he was a real champ for it which was awesome. For the main protagonist, we had Jamie Roseman, who really did a terrific job. And even with his audition tape, he was pretty much auditioning for a completely different film, since a lot more was added to the later script version that wasn't in what he auditioned for. And I think he adapted to the changes very well, and overall delivered a really solid performance. Three, two, one. Oh, oh, oh. You okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. For the lighting setups, I kept it pretty simple. We had a few different scenes uh, with some different lighting setups. The first one being the hotel lobby. For this one, there were a couple challenges. One is, since we're filming in the basement, there's a bunch of windows uh, just on that bottom floor. And so we have to cover all of those windows up with a bunch of different blankets and sheets and things just to block out any light that's coming in so we can just use the lights that we have in the scenes. For the hotel lobby scene, I had one light behind just to kind of backlight everything and also key light Sean uh, for that scene. And then I had another light just on that opposite angle for Jamie when they were acting in that scene. For the first shot in the hotel room, I had a light outside the door just to show light coming from the hallway. And then we acted out him <laughs> turning on the light. Of course, we don't have an actual light switch in there. So when he acts it out, I turned on a, the big lamp on top just key lighting everything in there. And then we uh, had a lamp and whatnot for practical lights, because you know us at BHP, we love our practical lamps. Visual effects. Trying to limit the VFX in this film was definitely something we wanted to do since we had this really cool practical creature, but even with having a creature, there's still little things that you need to do to enhance it. For the final scene where our character gets pulled up into the vents, that was a simple wire removing shot, as well as adding a green screen plate of the claw to make it look like he was being grabbed. What we're calling our hero shot of the spider where he jumps out of the vent and lands to the floor was the most complicated one. To achieve this, we had two different plates, one where he was landing safely on a mat and one where he wasn't. And we combined those together really seamlessly and also added a lightning flash uh, to just really seam it all together and this one turned out awesome. When we were filming we were you know we're often talking about different things and we ended up someone mentioned something about what the spider would sound like and then I actually just made a noise and they're like wait that can work so that's the spider sound is actually me. <laughs> kind of like
like that. And of course, different pitch and different effects on, on the audio, but that was basically it. <laughs> Stunt guy, gaffer, and spider sound guy. Big thanks to everybody supporting us uh, everywhere on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and especially Patreon as well. We love you guys. We're gonna keep pumping out this content for you. Keep watching it. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we appreciate you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'd love to do another story that takes place at Cobbler Pill Hotel, but uh, maybe that'll be in the future. We have tons more content coming at you guys as usual and a bunch of new short horror films coming and I can't wait for you guys to see them. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Good. Okay, so all hail the YouTube algorithm. Hit the f***ing subscribe button or it will come for you. It has come for me and trust me, it's better to just give in. Just give in.